Hi everyone and welcome to this body tutorial where we will see how to texture our VDB mesh and add extreme detail to our destruction. Okay, so what we want for the texture is to have the same that I applied to my Sphere 1. We can see here in the material editor how the texture is and that it is well applied to my Sphere. Perfect. And now I'm going to apply this texture to my Typhlo setup. But we can see that the texture is not applied to our setup at all. It's because we must tell to Typhlo to come and retrieve the UVW information from the Sphere 1. For this, we will add a VDB modify operator. Select UVW for the grid. For the input vector, we therefore select UVW surface. And finally, we pick the sphere one, and it's perfect. So, if I go forward now in the animation, we see that the texture match well with our destruction. We can see the exterior and interior face, and what is good is that we can assign a texture for each part. I have here a multi sub object with two textures for the ID one and two. To do this, it's very simple. Just go to the Voronoi Fracture, Air Fracture, and select Override Cap Material, and set the ID to 2. Now if I go back to my editor and apply the texture to type floor, we can clearly see the difference in texture between the two parts. And I can of course modify my texture at any time. Great. This is basically how to apply a texture to your VDB mesh and assign a different texture to each part of your destruction. Now what we want is to add a lot of detail to our destruction. For that we will have to subdivide our simulation. So I created a subdivide operator in my event 2 and I'm going to start by putting a high value to show you. Maybe try 1. And if I reactivate it, we can see that our simulation begins to be subdivided. That's exactly what I want, but uh, we want to subdivide it a lot more, so I'm going to lower the value to 0.1, I think. And there we have an extremely subdivided mesh. You can see if I switch to clay mode that we now have a mesh that could generate a lot of detail. We can also see that some parts are not subdivided. It's because our subdivide does not collapse at the second Voronoi fracture, but it's good, it adds variation in my opinion. Okay, so once that's done, what we want is to export this simulation. I have here an export particle. We will therefore export in TaiCache. I will select the frame range I want from my animation. Of course, I select a folder for the path of my export. And once we are sure that everything is good, I only have to generate my tie cache. Okay, great. So we can see that the tie cache has been created and we will no longer need our tie flow one. I can also hide this tie cache because what we will do is to create a second tie flow. So I'm just going to disable what I don't need at the moment. And what I did is just created the browse flow and selected my tie cache. We can see that it generated the cache of our simulation, but we see that there is a problem. It's because we need to update this simulation, so I created a flow update and I selected the same tie cache. And now, if I activate it, we can see that we found original simulation. It's perfect. Now, what we want is to add detail in our destruction. For this, I created a displays that you can see here. You can use the single noise, but my advice is to create your own texture. So if I open the material editor, we can see here the noise texture that I created. It's just a simple noise with a very low size. A noise tab to fractal with 10 as level to have a lot of detail, and I put a very close value to have a very strong contrast. All that's left to do is drag and drop this texture into the map slot. And I'm just going to disable the ID for now. And if I activate now the displays, we can see that detail has been added to all our mesh. You can, if you want, increase the amount of the displays. 
maybe here 0 0.4. We see that it's really more intense. It was just to show you, but in my opinion, 0 0.5 is a really good value. And now what we want is to separate the part as we did for the texture. We will therefore reactivate the IDs with the mat ID of 2. And we can see that detail has been added only on the entire parts. It's very cool. You can of course adjust the noise texture as you want. And here we have a very important parameter, the border influence. I'm going to show you to better understand how it works by going to frame where the sphere is complete. And we can see here that our sphere is clean. But if I deactivate this parameter, we can see that the display extends a little too far on our mesh. So don't forget to activate reduce strength near border if you have this problem. You can also fully control the distance and the fall off. And you can see if I go forward that the effect is still perfect. The last thing to do is to simply apply your texture to the type flow too. And it's all over for this part. All you have to do is render your animation and start compositing. Okay guys, so that's over for this bonus tutorial. A second part will arrive very soon and we'll be on the compositing in After Effects. See you soon guys. Bye.